my name's Dr. Stephanie Fade. I'm a dietitian and a member of Nutritionist Resource. And I've been asked to talk to you today about how dietitians can help people with eating disorders. Now, dietitians support people with eating disorders working alongside other healthcare professionals. Most commonly, I would work with psychologists and psychiatrists, GPs, and sometimes pediatricians. There are lots of different types of eating disorders, but one group of people I often find myself supporting are those who have been severely limiting the amount of food that they eat. These people often tell me that they have invasive thoughts in their heads, telling them that they need to eat the least or be the skinniest. Whenever I'm working with someone like this as part of my assessment, I would always look at risk. This is because it is an absolute myth that you need to have a really low body weight in order to be at serious risk from your eating disorder. We actually look at a wide range of different factors. Working alongside my medical colleagues, if we feel that someone is at serious and imminent risk, either in terms of their physical and or their mental health, we would always advise them to head along to A&E and get checked out first. But we can actually help most of you outside hospital, so please do still get in touch. One thing that dietitians do when working with people with restrictive eating disorders, which is what we call the situation where they've been severely limiting their intake, is we help them to shift their mindset around food. Eating disorders tend to rob people of a rich understanding of the role of food and they narrow it down to being about calories and the impact of those calories on things like weight and shape. So I start by getting to know the person, understanding a little bit about their dreams and their goals for the future. This really helps me to tap into their motivations and that can help to move recovery along. I then look at the different nutrient groups and how different nutrients can benefit a healthy functioning body. So for example, if I'm looking at fats and oils, somebody with a restrictive eating disorder might say to me, but I don't want to eat fats and oils. They're terrifying, they're packed full of calories. But we know that fats and oils have some important roles to play for a healthy functioning body. For example, they're part of every cell membrane and cell membranes at the end of the day keep the bad stuff out of cells and the good stuff in. So as we start to work through all of this information and talk about people's motivations, we can gradually help them to think in a fresh way about food and think more positively about food. I also help people to understand the amount of food that their bodies need during recovery and that can be quite a lot. I never talk to people in terms of calories. It's much more important that people understand the amount of food that their bodies need in terms of what it looks like on a plate or in a bowl. So I take a plate by plate and a bowl by bowl, bowl approach and I always tell people that every meal and every snack is a fresh start. Sometimes when I'm working with people who are not eating enough or not eating enough variety, it hasn't got anything to do with concerns about weight or shape. These people are often diagnosed with something called avoidant restrictive food intake disorder or ARFID. People with ARFID can have a strong disgust response towards food, often associated with sensory properties, things like texture, for example. Other times they are afraid of eating, perhaps because of a previous experience of food poisoning or choking. Other times they just find themselves feeling really, really full, even though they've eaten a very small amount of food. They want to be able to eat more, but they just feel like they can't. I advise people in this group to work with a psychologist because a psychologist can help you to really begin to understand and uh, your condition and to be less afraid of food, to be more able to sit with the feelings that food gives your body. Once people feel more comfortable around food, having worked with a psychologist for a little while, then dietitians have a really important role to play in helping them to start to eat better. So for example, if people are eat not eating enough variety, I would always look at current preferred foods, foods that seem safe and look at what the sensory properties of those foods are. I would then look at what they're currently eating and explain to them where the areas of nutritional deficiency are and think about foods that would help to plug those nutritional gaps. We try to find foods that can plug the gaps that have similar sensory properties to ones that are already preferred and that makes the whole process of beginning to eat a wider variety of foods a little bit easier. 
I also work with people who present very differently and eat very large amounts of food, often really fast. These people are often diagnosed with something called binge eating disorder. There's an important evidence-based approach to treating this called guided self-help for binge eating disorder. And many dietitians, including myself, have been trained in this. People with binge eating disorder may have a healthy weight or may be overweight and often they come to me thinking that they've been referred to a dietitian so that they can lose weight. But it's really important to say that the evidence base is crystal clear and shows that you have to tackle the binge eating first. I often find that as people binge less and start to eat better at balanced meals throughout the day, they tell me they feel like they probably have lost weight, even though I don't encourage them to weigh themselves. They certainly tell me they feel like they've got more stamina and they just feel better in themselves. So I hope this has given you a really good flavour of how dietitians can help people with eating disorders. If you'd like some support, you can find me at Nutritionist Resource along with my other dietitian colleagues. You can also find me at eatingmindset.com, which is my website, or on my social media at Eating Mindset on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.